I'm a never Trump guy. I never liked him. Donald Trump finally picked his vice presidential candidate and it is J.D. Vance, which I think is a excellent pick that's strategic and valuable for everything here going forward. But a lot of people have said, hey, well, some of his never Trump opinions back in 2015, 2016, mean that Trump is making a bad choice and that this is just another way for the deep state to be involved in Trump's campaign and just kind of being overall downers on J.D. Vance. Well, let's step back. First of all, J.D. Vance is a very interesting person. He's young and he's got a really good mind. He came to prominence because he wrote the book Hillbilly Elegy, which by the way, Hillbilly Elegy was a good book, but I even had some issues with Hillbilly Elegy because I, I'm not sure I agreed with some of his perspective on these Midwestern people, in which he was essentially talking about almost an autobiographical sense, you know, working, going to Yale, getting into an Ivy League, but then J.D. Vance would have to come home and deal with drug-addicted family members. And that kind of is the classic Midwestern story where the opioid epidemic devastated entire Rust Belt communities, which is one of the reasons why he became so popular and was so well-liked, because kind of like Trump, he had a very down-to-earth Earth feeling, but is also a very intelligent person. But so in 2015, 2016, he gets his rise to prominence writing Hillbilly Elegy, which by the way, that book did help, I think, Donald Trump get elected and really spoke to the working class people that would end up electing Donald Trump in 2015, 2016. And so he writes the book and in 2015, 2016, he's kind of a never Trumper, which by the way, was the main Republican party line. If you wanted to be any kind of Republican conservative, you hated Donald Trump, except for the few who were smart enough to realize the kind of of astute, smart, uh, incredible moment that they were living in to get him to be the next president. But all that changed in about 2018. J.D. Vance came to terms with Trump and figured out, hey, you know, I misread the moment. I did a political miscalculation and ended up making up with Trump and ends up endorsing Trump, supporting his next 2020 election and becomes a major Trump ally. J.D. Vance also runs in similar kind of right wing tech circles with Mark Andreessen and Peter Thiel, who aren't necessarily like MAGA donors, but they do fall, I think, center-right to uh, slightly more than center-right on the political spectrum, and they do give money, and that is what is important for the Republican Party. So J.D. Vance has just a field, a circle, a bubble around him, which kind of combines the, I don't want to call them moderates, but the center-right Republican Party, maybe some establishment with, you know, the more far-right, MAGA, grassroots, populist faction of the Republican Party. So he's kind of uniter in that sense. So he comes around 2018, 2020, really embraces MAGA, Donald Trump, and then runs for Senate in 2021 and gets Donald Trump's endorsement. All that should tell you that J.D. Vance is a trusted partner and that he should be a good pick for Donald Trump because obviously Trump trusts him. Now you can do all kinds of meandering and backflipping and math and figure out, okay, well, is he actually good? Is he actually bad? But a few factors is, well, Trump made the decision, so how much do you trust Trump? Is Trump really going to get hoodwinked again and pick a Mike Pence type vice presidential candidate who ends up stabbing him in the back? I don't think so. I think Trump has learned his lesson. I think whatever vetting process J.D. Vance has gone through by now has probably been pretty excellent. Also, all those comments that, you know, you're seeing about J.D. Vance in the past were already vetted by Trump's team, by the way. So you have to remember, everyone knew that these marketing ploys about, you know, J.D. Vance calling Trump Hitler and stuff, all that garbage. You know, Trump already knew all of this, right? And yet he still picked Vance. So what's really happening is media is going and trying to demoralize Republicans and create rifts within the Republican Party by saying, hey, you should not trust this guy. Even though he's already been vetted, he's already pro-Trump, he has the track record, I think, to prove that he's a very Trump-esque guy. And Trump's given him his stamp of approval. Like, what else do you need as a Republican? So everything else I would actually ignore. Now, I have told people, you know, it is good to think like this. It's good to think, okay, am I missing something? What is the play? You should do your research search your due diligence on J.D. Vance. There's nothing wrong with saying, hey, I have my suspicions. That's a good thing because it means you're informed. It means you're reading, you're looking, you're researching. I applaud all of that. But don't overthink it too much. The times that we're in call for certain strategic decisions. Vance brings some huge strategy to the table. One, he's Catholic, right? So Catholics who are voting for Biden for being Catholic. Well, now J.D. Vance is Catholic. So, you know, there goes that sway. He's super pro Bitcoin, right? He actually has said that he holds Bitcoin. So that pretty much puts 
the Bitcoin vote on a lock if Trump didn't already, which I think he did. He's also in the Midwest. Maybe Vance running will help get Sherrod Brown out of Ohio, and it'll probably help with Pennsylvania, Michigan, Minnesota, and Wisconsin because he is a Midwesterner, and that Rust Belt certainly is a strategic region for the United States of America when you are trying to win a presidential election, assuming that he can bring more people into the fold. He's also young. He's, I think, below the age of 40, definitely below the age of 50, so he brings in new ideas, new philosophies. He is what the future of the Republican Party might be like. So being young, having a lot of energy, and he also compliments Trump because he's not as good of a speaker. He doesn't have the same energy, and so he's not ever going to outshine Trump. Uh, he's kind of more of a philosophical mind, kind of more on the back end, which Trump definitely is not, so to speak. Trump talks like a populist. He talks like a New Yorker. Vance is a little bit more refined, you know, still down to earth, but a little bit more refined um, in his speech and in his colloquialisms and in his demeanor. So I think it's a good complimentary relationship. Absolutely. But given the events of Trump's assassination, I think J.D. Vance is just as radical as Trump is, which means if they kill Donald Trump, J.D. Vance is going to be the next person to, you know, carry the torch. And so now a lot of people should be worried because J.D. Vance, I think, has Trump's mission in mind. Uh, and having that mindset going forward, if Trump dies mid campaign, J.D. Vance is essentially the anointed one to take over. And you know what's funny is more than likely J.D. Vance would probably then pick someone like a Vivek to be his vice presidential candidate. But if Trump dies in office, then J.D. Vance, who also, by the way, has the D.C. political insight, which is also important. He's not an outsider. He understands the game, especially the game in the Senate, right? So J.D. Vance has enough experience and knowledge now about the swamp, the political process with the same ideologies as Trump. But that makes him a very good partner, I think. What's interesting is I wonder who's going to take his Senate seat. And I think the process in Ohio is that the governor or a group of people on the state level will then pick who the new senator is if J.D. Vance steps down. I don't know if they have a resign to run law like we used to here in Florida, uh, but if they do, he'll have to step down to run for president. So I wonder who that pick is going to be. Could be Vivek. I doubt Vivek would take it. You know, Vivek could take it and then still resign once he's appointed to a position by Trump. So certainly that's a, a something, a position that Vivek might take up. But if it's not Vivek, I don't know who it might be because uh, I know Vivek would rather have an administrative position rather than just be a senator of Ohio. But all that to say, guys, is if you're worried about J.D. Vance as a political pick, I don't think you should be. I think he's a very good pick. He's a strategic pick. Is he the best pick? I don't know. I don't know who the best, be completely honest with you, but I think he's a good pick. I think he's reliable. I think he's got a good strategic mind. I think he's a political animal like both Trump and Vivek. I think he can read the room, read the situation, and I think that's why Democrats are so scared of him. And just Democrats being scared of him should be enough to tell you that he's a good pick.